I think that what, what um, strikes me sometimes the most is every single soldier Marine I, I met, they really wanted to do something good. And um, many of them were very young, and they thought that this was a kind of um, answer to their life, to the mystery of what do you do in your life, right? And um, some of them joined to get money for school, but I think all of them joined for some sense of they wanted to do something bigger than themselves. And so um, to be taken away from that dream at a moment that they didn't choose and then sort of thrust back in this uh, life of a veteran is a very uh, unheroic transformation in our culture. Right? We don't look upon that as heroic. I mean, we throw this word hero around all the time, but truly we don't look at that transformation as a heroic one. It's a very difficult one. And I found these um, mainly men at a very vulnerable moment because I sought them out right when they had been released from military hospital. So they, they have, it was really like the immediate shock of, OK, that life is gone. This is what I'm left with. Um, so I spent a very, very intensive eight or nine months photographing over 20 um, severely wounded veterans. And then in 2006, I got the opportunity to photograph um, this couple. Um, this picture's in the show. Um, Renee Klein, Ty Ziegel. Ty Ziegel was a Marine reservist from uh, central Illinois. Uh, and after his second tour, he got wounded very, very badly. And I spent um, a bunch of time with them leading up to their wedding in 2006. So I'll go through these pictures. Um, it's a very different style of photography than the other pictures. Uh, the other ones were photographed on a Hasselblad with film, uh, square format. These were shot um, 35 millimeter digitally. Um, I was like a fly on the wall. Wherever he went, I went. Um, he was completely unselfconscious. Um, never asked me to not take a picture. The only thing he didn't want me to photograph was his head. Um, and he'd always wear a baseball cap. I, um, I know these are hard pictures to look at, so I um, appreciate you spending time looking at them because it can be very um, difficult. For me, I don't have any issue looking at really deformed people. I don't know what it is. Like when I first met him, there was like five seconds of shock, and then I don't really see it, or I, I, I'm looking for something else. I mean, my challenge was is not to make him look freakier than he was, because right? you can do that with photography. Um, and what I decided to do is concentrate on very, um, very normal scenes, like anti-dramatic moments, really. Um, you know. Ty pouring cereal, pouring milk into a cereal. It's very simple, everyday things um, that felt like they had an enormous weight because of his disability. Um, but also the idea that, that war has so fully permeated the most basic uh, things we do in life, like having breakfast. These pictures were taken at a place called the Fisher House, which is this house where um, uh, in San Antonio, Texas, next to Brook Army Medical Center, uh, you know, wounded, wounded uh, soldiers, Marines, service people, they can sometimes stay there for 18 months. And uh, most family members can't afford to set up shop and stay with them. The military pays like two weeks of family members to stay. So this place, um, Fisher House, will um, allow family members to stay for free. It's quite beautiful. So um, Brene was um, his high school sweetheart. She stayed with him through this whole recovery process. Um, this is his house in Illinois. He was very different from some of the brain damaged people you heard in the video. When you hear someone who's brain damaged speak, it's very shocking, disturbing. Um, he didn't speak like that at all. He spelled, He spelled, uh, spoke completely normally. Um, he's funny, could laugh, you know. Um.
So there was a lot invested in this romance. I originally shot it for um, People magazine. I was on this kind of mission to get to, you know, have as much mass media cover the story as possible. Um, I felt very disillusioned by American media in the beginning. I think they kind of, kind of <clears throat> embraced this story a bit more in terms of the wounds from, of war veterans. But anyway, their, their narrative of this story was basically love conquers all, everything's going to be OK. Um, I took a little bit of a different point of view. I saw things a little not quite so um, rosy and perfect. Um, but everyone, you could see everyone in the town invested in the success of this marriage. The uh, governor proclaimed their wedding day, uh, Brene and Thai Day. Um, his physical therapist came in from Texas to uh, be part of his, the wedding. So this is him getting dressed. The only time I saw him without the hat. He couldn't get on his prosthetic arm, so he just threw it in the back of his truck. They became a kind of sensation, in part because of my story. Um, even though the picture in the exhibition was never published here until it was shown later as um, in an art exhibition. 